Hello, and welcome back for another Tell Aquarium, live from my living room, hosted by the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Laura, and I work for the Education Department at the Alaska Sea Life Center in Seward, Alaska. We hope you're having a fantastic weekend, staying safe out there, washing your hands, maintaining your physical distancing, and making sure that you're able to spend a little bit of time outside, enjoying the natural world, getting that vitamin D, a little bit of exercise is really great for you. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about animal disguises and camouflage, uh, and at the end, we're going to have a really cool activity that you can do afterwards um, with in your house with your kids or your spouses or your friends uh, because it's absolutely a blast. Uh, it's mostly for little kids, but I've done it with middle schoolers and they've had an absolute blast. So we're going to go through a little bit of a PowerPoint, uh, show some really cool videos and things like that. Um, but if you have any questions, drop them below. We will answer them as soon as we can. So let's start here. Animal disguises. Uh, I'm a huge cat person. You might see my guys running behind me. I got two of them here who like to always show up when I start recording videos or going live. Uh, they're quite silly. Um, but right now we've got one animal trying to blend in with two other ones. We've got a cat trying to blend in with two raccoons. I think they're doing a pretty good job here. So camouflage is just the act of an animal disguising itself. I put I had to put some stuff in here for Star Wars Day, which is on Monday, so May the 4th, uh, so it should be really fun. We got a womp pug, things like that. But it's just the act of an animal disguising itself. It's not about them becoming invisible, it's just blending into the environment. So, again, I'm a cat person, so I'm all about, I love the memes of cats blending into their environment. And I think these four uh, guys are doing a really great job blending in with their environment. Again, they're not disappearing completely, but uh, on a Passover, if you were a predator and you were trying to hunt one of these guys, you'd blend, you wouldn't maybe not see them the first time. Or if they're trying to sneak up on prey, they might be able to do it that way. Uh, so, one of the big things I always get asked by kids is, is it predators or is it prey? Do things that eat things use camouflage, or the things that get eaten use camouflage? And the answer is both. Both predators and prey use camouflage. So today we're going to talk about five different types of camouflage pretty quickly. This is in no way a complete list. This is just five that I thought would be really good, really easy to understand, really easy for me to explain, and that we could have some really great examples both at the Sea Life Center and the ocean as a whole. So we'll go through all five of these. There'll be some pictures. There'll be some um, videos and things like that, um, and hopefully I'll answer some of your questions. So the first one we're going to start with is counter shading, which is literally just using different colors to confuse the animals from above or below. And we've got three really great examples here, um, two of which are found at the Alaska Sea Life Center, and one of them is found out in our bay. So we have the puffin and the common mirror and the orca are three animals that are very, uh, very, very different coloring. They've got that white belly and that dark black back. And that is simply so that if an animal is swimming over them or flying over them, they'll look down and they'll look dark, like the ground or the ocean. Uh, if they look up, they have that white, they're going to look like the sky or even lighter um, with that. So they're blending into their environment based on their colors. You see this in a lot of stuff. These aren't the three only examples, but I. these are two or three that if you come to sewer, there's a good chance you would see them. So there's counter shading. Uh, the next one we're going to talk a little bit about is active camouflage. So actively changing colors rapidly enough to match your surroundings. A lot of people think of uh, the chameleon with this, but we have some active camouflage here at the Alaska Sea Life Center in the form of a cephalopod, which is an octopus. This is not an octopus that we have uh, in Seward or even in Alaska, but this is a really great example that you see a lot of places. So you see as that diver got really close, they finally gave up their hiding spot, inked, and tried to get away. As the diver continues to get closer, they're going to stop, we're going to start looking really big, have those big black eye to make it look like they're a lot bigger than what they actually are. Do this in reverse. And there it goes. So the octopus is not only matching uh, simple things like the color of the green algae, but they're also matching the pattern, the different colors of green, the brightness, the fact that it's during the day and not at night, and the texture, which is bumpy and there's ups and downs and things like that as it flows through the water. And it's able to match all of those things. And octopus, cephalopod, uh, cephalopods as a whole, but octopus, squid, 
uh, cuttlefish. They're all really, really great, fantastic camouflage uh, animals that are just above and beyond anything I've ever seen in my life. So that's active camouflage. The next one we're going to talk a little bit about is self-decoration, covering yourself in materials from your environment to either make you look like your environment or to confuse folks. So the really great thing that we have at the Alaska Sea Life Center in our touch tank actually are decorator crabs. And when I'm talking about decorating crabs, I'm not talking about painting or hanging pictures. I'm talking about decorating their body. So if you've ever, if you have little kids, you've probably seen um, the octonauts, and this is a really great uh, episode where they have a uh, decorator crab that is. Uh, looking, I think they stole a spyglass. It's been a while since I've seen it. But here's an actual decorator crab. This is from PBS. Uh, you can find this online. It's really, really cool. So this decorator crab is maybe not the best at decorating, but they're putting things all over their body. And it may be something as simple as eggshells or rocks or different parts of plants. But they can also put things like sea anemones on there, which might be venomous to other predators. And so it maybe is sending a message like, you don't want to eat me. I'm a bunch of anemones, but it's actually just a crab underneath it. So, we do, like I said, we do have decorator crabs at the Alaska Sea Life Center. They're in our touch tank. I've got two pictures here. I'm going to give you a minute. I'll, I'll actually show you what a decorator crab looks like without anything on them uh, and so that you can go ahead and look uh, there and see if you can find it. I'll give you a couple of seconds. They're super hard. They're, they're covered with eggshells, I believe. All right, I'm going to show you. You can pause it, though, if you want to look a little bit longer. There we go, we got two of them here. It's actually the same picture, just zoomed in a little bit more, but they're covered in these shells that kind of, yeah, you can see this, uh, these little shells here, they've picked and put all over their body. So how do they do that? How do they cover themselves in these things that protect them? And it's because the hooks of the decorator crab look exactly like Velcro hooks. Um, and the, the hooky part of Velcro looks just like the hooks that are all over the decorator crab. And that's how they stick those things all over them. Uh, a really great activity we often do with this program is we have uh, felt and felt kind of stick together nicely. So we have kids get uh, like tongs and cover themselves with things to see if they can blend in with their environment. So their self-decoration. Uh, the next thing we're talking about is mimicry. So that's just making yourself look like something dangerous. So this is really easy for me because there's something called a mimic octopus. Uh, on the left uh, are all uh, the super, super scary mimic octopus, which is actually 100% harmless. Uh, and on the right, we have three different animals that are found in the mimic octopuses. Um, home range uh, that are venomous and animals don't want to mess with. So we got the venomous banded sole, uh, we've got the venomous lionfish, and we got the venomous sea snake. So coloring is one thing, but they actually take it a step farther and actually mimic the movement as well. So it's swimming along the bottom uh, just like a flatfish would at the bottom of the ocean. So, though it doesn't necessarily fit into mimicry, I had to put this in here because, again, this is one of my favorite animals in the touch tank that are, I say that a lot about, it, a lot about, a, I say that about a lot of animals, but this one really is. So, this is a, sea, a California sea cucumber, and kids all the time come up, and they're like, is it going to hurt me? Is it scary? And, like, to be honest, like, I don't understand how animal, how scientists were like, oh, there's a sea and a cucumber and it's going to look like this scary thing, which never really made sense to me. However, they're actually pretty harmless. So they're actually quite squishy, including those spikes that make them look super, super scary. But they're actually totally harmless to us. Uh, so they're really great animals for kids to come and like test their bravery with this. Uh, it's super, super fun. All right, so there's mimicry. And the last one we're going to cover a little bit is concealed coloration. And that's just blending into your environment. So, again, <laughs> I say this a lot. This is another one of my, this is my fav one of my favorite fish. Uh, we don't have it in the Sea Life Center right now, which makes me really sad. Uh, but this picture, there is an animal hiding in there. And no, it is not this one right here. That's pretty simple. Uh, we're looking for another one. Uh, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to look for it, or a few seconds, not a few minutes. All right, again, I'm going to show you, but if you want a little bit longer time, you could pause. We can figure it out together. It is 
this guy right here. This is a bay pipefish, and it looks like this when it's not hiding in that eelgrass. Now, the great thing about bay, bay pipefish is not only is the color and the, like, uh, shape of their body really, really adapted to blend in with this eelgrass. They don't swim like normal fish. They swim kind of like this, allowing them to blend in with that eelgrass even more. Now, the other one that we really like is we the sea stars blend in really, really well. Um, this isn't necessarily sea star that we have in our touch tank, uh, but it's a really great one because uh, it looks like it's blending in with that rock really, really well. And of course, let me point the right way. Everyone knows what that guy is. That is an otter. And some of their favorite foods are sea stars. And this is where that activity is going to come up that hopefully you'll do uh, with your uh, friends and family. Uh, again, I've done it with preschoolers all the way up to middle schoolers. Middle schoolers absolutely love it. Uh, the younger kids, it's really good for matching colors and patterns and all of that really cool stuff. So to begin with, you're going to need paper, scissors, color pencils, markers, crayons, and some tape. I would highly recommend painter's tape because in a minute you're going to see that we're going to stick these sea stars everywhere. And I only came up with one example because it was the easiest one to come up with in my apartment um, and not have to find sea stars uh, all the time. So for example, I colored a sea star and I put it on my Canadian flag that hangs above my desk. And I'll give you a few seconds to try to find it. Shouldn't be too difficult because I am not an artist, nor could I find the right color red marker. It is right there. So super simple, right? Uh, if this was a sea star, putting some of their body on that red, some of the body on their white would be great. Here's an example of it. If the sea star moved a little bit over, you can see how it's very, very easy for them to be seen. So there's concealed coloration, a really good one for you to uh, use. Uh, this is also one of the, probably the most well-known. This is what people think of when they think of hunters and military. It's all about just blending in with your environment, really generic things like that. So I hope you had a great day today, learned a little bit about camouflage, learned a little bit about uh, animal disguises that they may have. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, drop them down into the comments. Like, subscribe. We do this every day at 2 o'clock Alaska time. Um, and we'll continue to do them for the foreseeable future. Uh, hope you're staying safe out there. Wash your hands, staying inside as much as possible, uh, and making sure that you are uh, maintaining social distancing as you are going out when you need to. Hope you have a great day. Hopefully see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.